And from the hollers and hills of West Virginia, it's Heavenly Hills Homestead with another episode. Stay tuned. Boo! fifties out here. Maybe low sixties. Yard is a dog on mess. Would you quit sniffing and sit? I ain't got nothing. video inside of a video here in a minute and post it first all about strategizing for the way offs guys growing for the way offs kind of strategizing what's what you need to start trying to plan all that out now best as possible okay and uh do the best you can so we're gonna be talking about that here in just a minute get okay let's see here the boys and gals Anybody laying any eggs yet? It looked like he was getting ready to there. Uh, not long ago, you know, we're being bred and stuff. Of course, you're still probably being bred. Yeah. 
These little chickens eat more than big chickens do. You wouldn't think it, but they do. They'll eat you out of house and home, these little rascals do it. Go back here and see if there's any eggs. There probably isn't. I'm gonna put some more straw in here though. Y'all didn't knock the rest of it out since yesterday. Hey, I was mean, put some hay in there for you. Farts. Need to go get my other coop soon. Put it in here and then I'd, I'd be a little bit better off. I had the other coop up here, separate them out better. Come on, about, let's go. Let's get them. Come on. Ride them up. Go get them, Bob. They got it out. Go get them. Come on. Come on. Come on. Let's go. Get them. Push them back. Push them back, Valkyrie. Come on, girl. Let's go. Let's go get them. Come on. Go. 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 Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl, Valkyrie. Good girl, Valkyrie. Good girl. Uh-huh. Now listen, boys. We ain't doing this. All right? Y'all stay in here. This is where you belong. You done been fed. Every other thing. You don't need to come out. You don't need to come out. You're just being buttheads. So you keep your butts in there. Because I'm telling you right now, you got about two, three months to figure this out. Because if you get out when I'm growing and eat something you ain't supposed to, you're going to regret it because I will eat you. I will eat you. Okay, guys. So I told you earlier we were going to make a video on soil samples. And we're going to. How to get your soil tests and all this. I got to give credit or credit is due. So we're going to give credit here in just a minute because uh, I didn't come up with this idea. But it was brilliant. I'd already taken my soil samples. So I'm gonna go get some other things and we're gonna go over it. Right now, got a shovel here. Now I can take this shovel and go over in my dirt. <clears throat> I can dig right here, like that. Grab it up, flip it over, bust it up a little bit. All right, get my soil out of there like this. Okay, put it in a bag. Y'all see that coating that's on that shovel? It's paint or something, right? Tempered in the U.S. All right, there's some kind of a paint on that shovel. There's going to be rust and stuff on that shovel. There's going to be all kinds of things in that shovel. Rock particles and everything. So, if you're going to use a shovel, do this. Clean the shovel off with alcohol. Okay, go get you some alcohol. First, clean it off with... Uh, with a uh, water right hot water and a scrub brush get it cleaned off take alcohol clean it off and then you know use your shovel clean it on both sides okay and then what you do is you if you're going to use a shovel got to see how i got pieces of concrete in there and stuff well, that concrete if i can get chunks of a little bit of that rubbed off on my soil test it'll come back and have amounts you know uh, high of this that, and the other right same goes with if you chip a rock, you'll get rock mineralization in there, you know, other things, okay? You're going to get some, some soil that you don't, you know, some samples, readings that aren't correct, okay? So if you got to use a shovel, though, put her in there, bring it up, okay? Flip it over like so. And on this side where the, where the shovel touched, don't use that. Use right here, okay? On the other side of the shovel. Don't use the side where the shovel touched. Just use this side. That way, you don't get any contaminants, okay? Now, you can do it another way. So, fellow grower, Scott Bayou, I was talking to him, and he suggested this. He suggested getting a piece of PVC and a dowel rod that fits. I'll try to do this here like so okay and then you got this 
piece of dowel rod that fits in there to push it out. And what I'm going to do real quick, I'm gonna angle, angle the, uh, the end right here so that it's, you know, uh, can be cut, uh, cut the, uh, cut at an angle. So hang on a minute, let me get you set up here. All right, I'm gonna angle this off like so. You can take a grinder if you want. It'll probably be a little easier. I'm doing it this way, but it works. Okay, now we've got it cut. We can go into the dirt a little bit better. All right, guys. So here's the thing. If you're going to be growing for your jacket, okay, and that's three pumpkins at 1,300 and... Uh, 50 pounds. Let's just say that you need 4,000 total pounds to get your rower's jacket and it has to be between three pumpkins. Okay. So you have to grow basically 1333. All right. And point, uh, seven, five. Um, so that just say 1350 for your, for your, you know, your cutoff 1350 you'll be over 4,000 pounds easy okay you want to shoot for as big as you can get if you can get a 14 15 16 1800 pound pumpkin go for it right but 1350 is where you want to aim for three of them and get your jacket okay if that's what your goal is is to get a jacket this is the test that you need to do now i encourage everybody to get your soil tested because you need to know what's in it had i had done a soil test last year who knows? Probably could have got my jacket in the first year, okay? Because I did really good growing a thousand plus pound pumpkin, right? And two of them actually, two of them over a thousand. I just can't prove the 950 was over a thousand because it was rotted and stuff. But, um, you know, I got one at 915 that was weighed here, one at 1025 weighed here, and one at 950 weighed here, right? And then 581 was weighed. Um, so, I mean, I could have got, I could have probably done that if I had got that test done last year, but I didn't. I knew to, I knew people said to, but I did not do it. I had too much other things going on with fence building and all the other things that I had last year. So, um, what I'd done is I just planted them in, just tilled it and planted, okay? And that was good enough for last year. But this year, we're on a different game, all right? And this year, we need that jacket. We want that jacket, all right? So, I'm going to do my part. And pray that God does his, all right? That's all I can do. I'm going to do my part. And I know that this soil needs tested, so I'm going to test this soil, okay? Now, with that being said, doing the soil tests like this, okay, you can shoot for, you know, the 1,000-plus pound pumpkins, right? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take samples from all over the yard because it basically looks the same. And I'm going to put them all into one place i've threw out the soil from the shovel because after talking to scott i didn't wash that shovel don't know what's on that shovel could give me some bad readings so i made this thing we're going to do it all over again we're going to let this soil dry out and we're going to ship it off to them hopefully tuesday maybe wednesday to western labs and get my soil tested now if i was shooting for 1500 to 2000 plus pound pumpkins more on the range of 18 to 2000 okay then i would want to test this patch by itself i would want to test my sunflower patch up there by itself i would want to test the garden patch here by itself and i'd want to test on the other side of the garden patch by itself but seeing as how i only want to get 1350 to 1500 pound pumpkin this year okay just to get my jacket after the jacket, I want to grow for big. I want to grow for 2,000 plus pound pumpkins, okay? But this year's goal is the jacket. And in order to get the jacket, you got to have the soil test because you got to know what's in it. So I'm going to test every one of these and put it together. Again, 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 again. I, want, I cannot emphasize enough to some of y'all because sometimes we mishear people. This test that I'm going to do right now, where I 
incorporate all my soils throughout the yard together are only for growing thousand plus pound pumpkins okay if now everybody can do a soil test don't matter what everybody can do a soil test and i encourage you but this is for growing a thousand plus pound pumpkin if you want to hit 18 to 2,000 pounds and you have different places in your yard that you're going to grow like i do growing here growing up there in the sunflower patch and so on and so forth you will want to send a soil sample from here in different places in this patch okay then you'll want to get some from up you want to get your own soil sample from up there and mark it soil sample number two all right soil sample three four five whatever however many patches you want to try out but because all my soil looks the same that's the other thing i want to remind you of if your soil looks the same it's the same content it's the same you know mineral content the same textures and, and made of the same things okay and it doesn't look that much different from one another from one place to the other go ahead and bunch them all together but if say i get right here i got something going on and it and it don't look like down there it that soil looks brown like clay and this soil here looks like brand new topsoil you know like they just come in here and brought a whole dump of compost at one time and dumped it and and that's what this looks like then i'll test that down there by itself okay and i'll test this here by itself but all my soil throughout the whole yard is basically the same thing are there places with more sandy loam in them yes the garden is one spot it has a lot more sandy loam in the garden okay this over here is more clayish all right up there in the top more sandy loamish but heavy clay all right um so they are a little bit different but not drastically different to where it's like oh this is completely different soil okay so i'm going to take all of my stuff and put it together and we're going to uh to do it that way all in one soil sample all right now if, again if i was shooting for a, a 1800 or 2000 pound pumpkin then i would test this patch alone and then i'd go test sunflower patch alone and then i'd test all the other patches all, all of their own too other thing is you want to make sure that you get a soil sample from different locations within your patch you know take one here right then one there one here one there one here one there all right and i'm doing it this way okay you you you, you can you can kind of say you know you want x amount right you can say okay well i don't need this top layer with the roots in it i don't want the top layer with the roots in it so you can discard the top layer with the roots you want basically the hearts of it right kind of like the moon shining you want the hearts of the run the beginning of the, the beginning of the run you got a lot of heads okay a lot of menthol or not menthol methanol all right so you throw the heads out okay so we'll throw the heads out i don't know nothing about moonshine guys so i'm just kind of speaking from lack of knowledge um so uh then you got the hearts of it all right which is in the middle and then you got the backings at the back end of it which and the backings in this case would be the bottom the hard pan right you can get a little bit of hard pan if you want it's going to have a lot of nutrients down there in the bottom on that hard pan. And so you're going to be bringing them up and, uh, and could throw you off just a tad bit. So maybe the backings you might want to, you know, not give as much to, right? Or don't get into the backings too much, right? Which would be the hard pan down there. So I'm just using, I'm just using a moonshine references because that's the best analogy I can come up with right now. Uh, you know, the heads, the hearts, and the backings. All right. So anyhow, uh, we're going to push this in. All right like so and we're gonna get a bag all right i got a bag in the pocket and got a little hammer here all right and uh we're gonna go down about 12 inches i have marked it on here all right where we need to go uh also that's what you want to do you want to mark this before you go once you get to that mark you can quit and then pull it out and you'll have exactly how far you've gotten all right so Alright. Yep, got that to mark. Alright, now let's pull it up. Alright, now what we'll do. Oh, it's gonna be hard, ain't got nothing with it. Get my bag out here. It's getting dark, gotta hurry. 
All right, got my bag. All right, so put this in here. Put the, see, get it in the bag. All right, I'm gonna put push pole in there, like so. All right, I'm gonna push that out. Actually, I need to go get a longer piece. Hang on. Yeah, so as you can see, we got some soil sample in there. I'm gonna go collect some more all throughout the rest of the yard and get it, uh, get it put in the bag, get it dried out, and then get it uh, out there to Western Labs to get it tested. And tell me what I need to be putting in my soil. We're gonna get them from all over and put them in this one bag. Again, this is only doing this because I'm looking to get my jacket, okay? If I was going to look for an 1,800 to 2,000 pound pumpkin, I would test this patch by itself. I would pay to test the other patches by themselves, okay? But because I'm only looking for to get my soil tuned in this year, okay? Just to get me get me in the ballpark of growing an, you know, 13 to 1,500 pound pumpkin, then that's what I'm going to do. And then we'll talk about all the rest of it here in just a little bit. Soil calculators and all that good stuff. Guys, so now that we've got our soil test done, all right, kind of show you what we got going on here in the bag. Okay, here's what we got. So you can see some of this, like this here, we need to pick that out. Don't want any organic matter in there. That came out of the, out of the uh, part where the chickens are at. So it's gonna be uh, probably a little bit more nitrogen in that area, but not a lot because they don't go over there where I'm going to plant. They go over very little, okay? They're not over a whole lot. That's why I took this sample and uh, got rid of the top layer of it the best I could. That was probably some that I missed out there in the dark. Um, and like I said, I kept the middlings, <laughs> kept the uh, hearts of it. Oh, man, just ripped that leaf. Oh, no, I ripped it. Anyways, um, kept the best out of the middle best I could. See, we got some different uh, different stuff there, but it's all basically clay. Okay. So, I mean, it's, it is what it is, it's just clay. In fact, it's really clay. <laughs> um, you'll see, uh, there's, there's a piece here, need to get that out of there. Uh, you'll see when it uh, dries up, it's a little bit more loam-like, you know, once it dries. So, we'll get that all dried up and stuff. But, uh, I'm going to get it in a box here in just a minute and uh, we'll let it dry in the box because it will never dry in this bag okay so if you got a bucket use a bucket or a box um, I just used a bag for because I couldn't find a box right offhand I got a box now so I'll use the box put that in the box uh, dry it up in the box and then I'll pack it back in this bag and send it in this bag to them I'll go through it and I'll examine it. I'll get out all the organic matter that's in it. Any rock. See, like, look here. There's a nail. What's the chances of that? Right? After I've done went through everything with uh, a fine tooth comb with those metal detectors and dug up tons and tons and tons of iron out of my patches and still able to find a nail with a daggone three quarter inch uh, piece of water pipe. It measures one inch, but uh, it's crazy, ain't it? So anyways, I'll go through this and stuff. Better inspect it and uh, get, get, uh, get, I just want dirt. I don't want rocks. I don't want nothing, no organic matter. I just want dirt. See how that breaks up. I'll, I got the uh, sunflower patch from last year. I got the butternut squash patch slash pumpkin patch from last year and I got my actual pumpkin patch from last year. I've done all those. Um, so hopefully we'll, we'll get a rundown of what's what. Um, now, as far as beds go for the water, the giant watermelons and things, um, they're gonna have different compost and stuff put in those. So I'll, ha I'll either have to do a separate test or I'll just have to go like I did last year uh, just kind of blindly into it, kind of read the plants, see what they need and stuff from my from my watermelons and my cantaloupes. Um, but everything else, my cubic plants, all right, as far as those go, uh, my melon, or excuse me, my marrows, filled pumpkin, 
pump, my Atlantic Giant pumpkins, um, and and my gourds. Um, they're all going to be the soil will be tested for those, so we'll get them tuned in and, uh, and stuff. Um, some more things that I wanted to talk about are um, are you know the calculators. Um, so soil calculator. Oh my goodness! Oh my back! Um, cramping up real bad. Sorry about that. Anyways, I cramped so bad it took my breath away. Um, so, um, on some other notes, the calculators, um, what you'll have to do on them is uh, you'll, you'll get your results back. Oh, I'm so tired. And, uh, sorry about that. You'll get the results back and they'll, um, they'll tell you what, uh, what you need right well well they'll tell you what you're lacking and what you need to get in there right and then you'll have to find somebody that does the soil calculate and, and uh and stuff and you can do it yourself i guess if you, uh, if you know what you're doing uh, i do not know what i'm doing i'm not a whiz on that i'm gonna have to learn between now and then and get my soil tuned in and dialed in just right but now uh find you some people online like uh <laughs> Goodness gracious, if I could just get five minutes, I'd be done. Um, sorry. If you go on Facebook, uh, Garden of Giants, um, Mountain State Giant Growers, uh, any of the state's giant growing sites, BigPumpkins.com, um, any of those places, that deal with giants, right? Big, uh, backyard giant pumpkin growers on Facebook. Go check those places out. Post and post once you get your soil sample in there. Post your soils. Post your results from your soil test up and uh, ask you know for somebody to do a soil calculation and tell you what they need, and they can do it through email or whatever. Um, and they'll they'll dial you in uh, if you trust the people who's doing it and you know that they're good with what they're giving you uh, then just stick to the one but if you don't know you you know you're just starting out you don't know who they are they don't know who you are maybe get two or three people to do the same calculation for you figure it out send it to you an email and see the differences that both that both or all three of those different people give you. Uh, for example, if you're low in nitrogen and you know somebody, you send this out to two or three people, and you get you know one person saying you need one pound of, uh, of you know uh, your your local fertilizer uh, soil. You know, uh, excuse me. You need. Let me go back. So here's the thing. These people can recommend based on your local uh, fertilizers, based on what you can get locally. They can tell you what amendment to put in there. So if it's you know nitrogen and it's blood meal that you have access to, then they can put that in there. If it's you know um, calcium nitrate that you can get and use, then you know they can tell you that. Uh, they can you know whatever it is they you know that you're going to use. Tell them what you're going to use for a nitrogen or a phosphorus or whatever it is. And they can they can spe specify exactly the amount that you would need of that. If not, these people can kind of look around at the sources that you'll have at hand, and they'll recommend their own of, of you know whatever it is that they're going to use, and you know that's what you'll have to find, okay, and and then put on your garden. So, for instance, say uh, say that they think you can get blood meal readily available there or in your area, they'll write down you need you know uh, your your nitrogen deficient. And uh, the amount of nitrogen deficient that you are would take one pound of, you know, uh, blood meal per 200 square foot, right? Um, now, I don't know how it really goes. I'm just giving you a, a kind of a, a, a rough guess of what it is, okay? I've not got it. I've not done it, so I don't know. But this is how it's kind of been, you know, told to me, explained to me. So what you'll do is they'll say you need X amount of pounds per 
you know, thousand square foot or whatever, right? And then you'll go and you'll get that and you'll apply that much to your patch and that will bring you up to how much you need to be. Now, I think you can even specify to them you wanna be, you know, 2% above, 5% above, whatever on those. So they can calculate that. So say you wanna be 2% heavy in nitrogen. They can give you that calculation of what will give you 2% heavy in nitrogen, all right? Um, et cetera. So, you know, um, do that, find that, find those people. Once you get your soil test back, post your soil test up, you know, and, and, and like I said, one of the Facebook groups, like Growing Giants, uh, you know, Mountain State Giant Growers, uh, you know, the Kentucky State uh, Giant Grow, Pumpkin, you know, Giant Pumpkins or something of that nature, uh, Backyard Giant Pumpkin Growers, um, all those places, you can ask them. You can probably even ask, um, um, you know, might be some growers out there that know how to do it, you know, that um, may have YouTube channels. I don't know. Uh, you just have to ask them uh, and see if, if they know how to do the pumpkin calculation. And once you have your, your pumpkin calculation back, then comes the hard part. You have to start forking out the money and you have to start amending the soil to get the right mixture, all right, to get the, the nutrients that are going to be needed so that plant can have optimal growing capacity, all right? That's what you're looking for. You're not, you're, all right. Let's kind of try to figure this out so you guys can understand. So you, you plant a pumpkin, right? And that pumpkin has the bare necessities or it lacks in some things. It's got more than enough in others. Some things block, if there's too much of something and not enough of the other, the, uh, the, 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 ex the cat ion exchange rate, the positive, the negative charges that each of those have uh, can actually cancel one or the other out. And your pumpkin won't be getting that, night, that nutrient uptake or will be getting very, very little of that nutrient uptake. And what the soil test is for is to get maximum soil uptake, to get that soil as dead even for what that plant needs as possible. I mean, you can go a little heavy on some things, okay? But you wanna, you wanna be very careful because like I said, you go too heavy on some things, you will, you will hurt yourself because it'll knock out or block out something else that's very vital to pumpkin growing. So, soil tests are to get you at a, at a nice level scale to where everything's even keel. You can go in there, plant your pumpkin and it's got optimal growth potential. All right, that's what we're looking for. Optimal growth potential, O-G-P. All right, we're looking for the O-G-P, all right? And um, when you got optimal growth potential, your soil is at a level that is right for pumpkin, giant pumpkin growing, okay? You won't be able to grow a potato like you can grow a giant pumpkin in there. And it might grow a lot of good potatoes, but it will grow a pumpkin like no other, right? Everything is specific to that, all right? That's why we send it to the lab and we specify it's gonna be for a giant pumpkin, or we specify it's gonna be for the watermelon, or we specify it's gonna be for this or for that. All right, now, granted, a lot of our gardens that have giant pumpkins growing in them that's that soil tests can actually grow other things very, very successfully. So you just gotta kinda, you know, watch what you're doing though, okay? Every, and, and, and be very cautious of what you're doing and, and, and what you plan on doing. Anyways, um, you, get to, you get the soil test back, you, you get it in the calculator, somebody calculates everything that you need and then they bring it up you, to speed, they tell you what you need. Now, like I said, get you two or three different people to, to do this test if you don't know them. If it's somebody you know, somebody you trust, and somebody you know is consistently growing giant pumpkins, you know, 15, 18, 2,000 pounds. Like if Ron, Raw, if, let, let's put it this way. If Ron Wallace comes over and says, hey, here's what you need to grow a giant pumpkin that I did your soil calculation, I'm not gonna question it and I'm not gonna get a second opinion. I'm taking Ron Wallace to the bank. And I'm putting all the stuff he says into the dirt, okay? Now, if, if for say me, okay, my, like a guy like me comes up and says, yeah, that's what you need to grow a giant pumpkin in your soil. I'm gonna maybe go find another one or two people, kind of compare notes and see, you know, what it is. So um, just make sure that you, you know who the person is, you trust them, 
and that they know how to grow giant pumpkins, all right, through your calculations. If not, you can get you two or three people, you know, to calculate it, kind of bounce notes off of them and, uh, and you know, compare them and question them. You know, say, hey, you know, you said this, this guy says this, what's y'all's take on this? We need to find this, you know, what, 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 what's, what's what, all right? Um, and, and then, you know, I, you know, do accordingly, you know, whatever you need to do. Uh, to get your soil up. It's all about the soil, guys. It does not matter one bit what I do after I've planted that pumpkin, really. If, I mean, it does. But in the grand scheme of everything, if after I've planted that pumpkin plant in my soil, it's too late for me to amend my soil to get that pumpkin what it needs. Then I'm fighting all year to put it into the soil with liquid fertilizers and with other things, right? All summer long, fighting it, fighting it, fighting it, fighting it, fighting it. All right, whereas if I do a soil test now and, and, and plan ahead before I plant my pumpkins, then when I plant my pumpkin in that ground, it's got everything it needs at its disposal. And the only thing that I have to do, okay, is start burying vines. All right, water it and bury vines. Water it and bury vines. Now, will you need to add, you know, nutrients? Absolutely. You're going to constantly have to feed your plants, okay? But at least the bare necessities that are there, you've got, you've, got a, you've got a good base to work off of, right? You're not at a deficit, all right? Because if you don't do your soil test and you don't amend it properly, then you're starting at a deficit and you don't know what deficit you're starting at. So you could be starting at a phosphorus deficit. So your plant grows and it's big and it's green and beautiful. And you didn't know you had a phosphorus de deficit. So now you're fighting to get good roots to grow. Well, you can't grow a giant pumpkin if that thing ain't willing to grow roots that are big and, 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 and deep and wide, right? Because that's how it grow, grow, you know, grows and pulls all the nutrients and all that water into that plant and in the end of that pumpkin is by the root system. And if you don't have phosphorus, you can't grow roots, all right? It's too late to start worrying about potassium. You can sit there and spray a, a, a thousand gallons of 0025 on them, uh, on them plants. Yeah, but if you ain't got potassium to start out with, well, you're already at a, you're already at a, at a deficit and you're fighting that deficit all year long. Does that make sense, guys? So what, you, what doing the soil test does is it, it brings you back to a wonderful soil, all right, that you should have good pH in your soil. The balance should be good. Right, everything's even. And then what you do is you feed it to maintain that all through the year. You're maintaining your soil, right? You're maintaining your plant through feeding it, all right? And, and through maintaining that, you get a giant fruit, all right? Don't start at the deficit. If you start at the deficit, you're going to be fighting the deficit the entire year, and you're going you, you'll get a thousand pound, but you will not achieve better. You will not achieve greater. You know, um, I I knew right off the hand, right off, right off, when me and Rodabah lifted up, you know, Bertha this year. <laughs> when we lifted her up, and she only said ten twenty five, my heart sunk. It did. Now most of you guys would have been jumping up for joy. Oh, it's it's 1025, it's 1025, it's 1025. I was probably the saddest 1025 grower ever. And I'll tell you why. She measured out at over, you know, it was like 1189 or, or something like, it was something crazy. You know, um, no, no, well, it wasn't 1189, it was 11 something. And, uh, and, she, and she weighed 1025. Here I am expecting a, a you know, at least an 1100 pound pumpkin and you get a 1025. I was sad, I was upset. And Chris is like, hey, that's nothing to be ashamed of, man, RC, that's a good pumpkin. You shouldn't, hey, they were giving badges out of, you know, a couple years back for anybody that could grow a thousand pound pumpkin. You shouldn't be ashamed of that one bit at all for your rookie year, that's great. And I'm sitting there going, yeah, but she measured a lot bigger than that. She should have been bigger than that. You know, she, she went light. And uh, and guys, that that's that's the reality of not doing a soil test. I didn't know what was in that soil. I had no idea. Still to this day, I don't know what's in this soil right here. 
I have no idea what's in that. Did it grow a good pumpkin? Yeah. Did it do well? Absolutely. Anybody would be thrilled. There's guys that's been growing for years now and ain't hit a thousand pounds yet. There's guys that's been growing and ain't hit 900. And I hit 900s. I hit uh, a thousand. All right. And uh, and so I should be tickled plum pink. But guys, I, 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 the reality is, is it showed that it was bigger. So I have a problem with the exchange. I, I knew that. And by the time the way off came, I was asking other growers that I met, you know, at these way offs, hey, what do you know about cat eye on exchange? Ah, uh, really nothing. Hey, what do you know about cat eye on exchange? Oh, very little. What do you know about it? What do you know about it? What do you know about it? Nothing, 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 nothing. Really, there's not much that they know about. What they do know is that they get their soil tested and they just do what the soil test says, okay? Which brings me to a whole nother subject of you need to know what's what. You need to know the exchange rate. You need to know, um, you know, what, what, what happens when you, when you work at a deficit versus what happens when you work at an even, you know, even kill, all right? Um, how can you, how, you know, if your plant's doing this, you know, how can you come back from that? And, and you know, everything. If you got too much nitrogen on accident, what do you do to, to you know, leach it out and, and, and fix it? And, and you need to know all that stuff. But anyhow, that's for a different video. What we're talking about now is, is the soil. So you need to you need to get that soil test done in order to to get yourself right. And had I had done that in my first year, I'm not saying that I could have that it would have happened rather, but I do believe it had a better chance of happening. Me getting a jacket last year, had I had done what I knew to do, I knew to get a soil test, I just didn't do it. And I just didn't take the time to do it. I just didn't think about doing it. I had other things like putting the fence up to protect the plants and getting the plants grown and in the ground and not no deer coming in my yard and eating them right that's what i was worried about i didn't worry about the soil test and i should have i should have took the time to gone out there you know february march took the soil tests sent them off got it tested brought it back mended everything properly and done gone on about my way all right so don't make the same mistake i done and and not get a soil test the whole reason for this video is to talk about the, the importance of soil tests how to do them properly because there's no videos really out there on how to do them properly okay when i the reason why i use the plastic is because there's no contamination i don't have to worry about if you know the plastic was coated in zinc or the plastic you know had had this mineral on it or that mineral on it or you know had been used for this or that right um it was clean you know it was and and so is the dowel rod right the wood i didn't have to worry about none of that whereas yeah, you know, if you use metal stuff, unless it's, you know, stainless steel that you've never used it for nothing else, uh, you know, and let's say you hit a rock, you're going to bring up those minerals with that rock, you know, so it still could be off some, you know, it still could throw your, your sample off. That's why I got to get rocks, any rocks in here, I want to make sure I get them out. Any organic matter, I want to make sure I get that out, okay? Um, don't really want any of that. Uh, in here now i do need to bring back bring up my oem i mean you can tell look at this stuff i mean you could you could take that right there and you could you could uh make yourself a, a daggone uh you know cup daggone coffee cup out of this stuff and uh, put it in a kiln and fire it and, and it'd be good to go right i mean that's 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 some clay 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 there right um but you like look here see how that's kind of like sandy loamish look see it so i mean it's kind of and I won't be surprised if it does come back and say sandy loam. I won't be, because it's got that sandy loamish kind of kind of texture. But when it's wet, it's real bad wet. See, that's the other thing. It's going to tell me, and my soil test is going to tell me how much organic matter I have and how much I need to bring that up. And then see, I can I can then bring my OEM up, which is organic matter. I can put peat moss in there. I can put perlite in there. Okay, and all those things start start to incorporate, and you start to get better. You see. My roots, that stuff, even though I wasn't stepping on it, even though I was, you know, walking around it in boards and stuff, the water, the rain from, you know, from watering or rain was packing that stuff down. I literally had roots climb up and lay on the top of the ground trying to get air, trying to get oxygen, right? And you don't want that. You want them in the soil, not on top of the soil, right? 
and uh, and it, it it and it just packed so so hard and so bad that it was coming up for air. It had to get oxygen. Um, so this the soil test will tell you how how much you know OM you need to put in. Always add you some peat moss, and uh, and you know every couple few years you know you can add you some perlite and stuff. Or if you're like me and you ain't got enough money right offhand, you just you put as much in there as you can afford one year and then you put more in there the next year and more in there the next year and you just build your soil up over the next few years until you got your soil exactly where you want it as far as texture goes and, and uh, water drainage and stuff now um, clay holds an enormous amount of, of uh, uh, nutrients it also holds an enormous amount of water okay uh, water can can be detrimental. While we want water, water's good. Water, you know, pumpkin plants can suck up like 500 gallons of water a week or more, right? Um, you you need to really watch with when you got clay because clay will hold way too much water. It'll rot your roots. Um, so you need to you need to be very careful for that. But again, all this stuff is stuff we can talk about at a later date. I just wanted to talk about this soil. I'm sure there's things that I'm probably forgetting that I should be mentioning, but you get the overall gist of how to do it, the reason why to use a plastic core driver like that. You can you can build that. Literally, I had the stuff laying around. I didn't have to buy anything. Once Scott said, hey, you know, I took a piece of PVC pipe and a daggone dowel rod, and, and uh, that's how I use it to get my cores out. I said, not a problem, dude. So while I'm talking to him on the phone, I'm building my little, uh, my little uh, contraption that I used out there so that I could uh, get a core sample, all right? And uh, and thank you again, Scott, for that. That was a big help. Guys, that is that is not my idea. I just want to, again, tell you again, that was not my idea. I did not think about that. I was going I had done it with a shovel, already had it in here, had it dried out, was going to ship it off tomorrow. I was just going to make a video on, on how to do it. And was talking to Scott, and Scott said, hey, you know, I use plastic. That way I don't have any worries of contamination or anything in my soil sample and it's a great idea so thank you for that scott and guys go use that idea it's a wonderful idea using using a piece of uh, water pipe plastic water pipe you can use a plastic shovel if you got one that uh, you know get there and you want to go six to twelve inches all right guys um six to twelve inches is good again you want to watch that top layer and that very bottom layer um, you know, you, you, that bottom layer is going to hold a whole lot of uh, minerals and stuff because what happens in that first six to twelve inches, when it's leaching off, it leaches into that into that hard pan, right, and uh, and everything. And then here's the thing, guys: you can you can take that hard pan later and take a broad fork and run it in there. If it's a you know, one of them big long broad forks, you can actually get down there in that hard pan and flip it over some. You know what I mean? And turn it up into up into the soil. I mean, it'd be a little rough, but you could do it. Um, Real quick, one more thing I had. No, oh goodness, I'm lost. The top right on the top of my head. So that was the thing. Um, ta, take on it. Boy, I hate this. Tissue test. There we go. Man, I had it and then lost it again. Um, to tissue test. So you do your soil sample now, and you dial it in. Um, then you know you can you can do another soil test you know if you want to like right before planting um i actually have thought about doing that just to make sure that i'm, I'm good right before you know like uh, about two weeks before i plant test and see where i'm at all right and if i'm good there where where that is all right if i've brought it up to where it needs to be and then and the second soil test comes back good then i'll leave it alone and then i'll plant and i'll grow okay now with growing all right what i want to do is right before pollination okay of of the fruit you know we all know we we like these like these right here we know what ones we're going to pollinate in the next few days right i mean we can even see some of them right like uh right there look at that tip of my finger right there Boink. we know we're going to pollinate that tomorrow right so we know we, we track them we see them we track them and we know which ones we're going to pollinate all right, as far as pumpkin goes. So uh, what we wanna do is right before we go to pollinate that pumpkin, you know, we, we got seven to 10 days before that, sometimes longer if we catch it in time, like if we catch it at the tip, you know what I mean, of, of the of the, of the the growing vine, and we say, oh, there it is right there, it'd be, you know, about two weeks out. Um, then what we'll do is that day, okay, that we find it, we say, okay, we're gonna plant, we're gonna pollinate in a few weeks, 
take a tissue test. All right, send that tissue test off. Now this is next level growing, guys. If you just want to do a thousand pounds, do what I've told you, okay? Or I mean, you can do less. I grew a thousand pounds and didn't do it, but I think that's exception versus reality. All right, I, I really do. After after talking with people and everything, I think that's more of an exception of what happened versus the reality of what happens. Okay, I don't think that happens often that people hit a thousand without doing soil tests and stuff. Anyhow, do your soil test. Make sure you're dialed in. Get that right. Maybe even do it twice if you're like me. Then right before you go, you find your pumpkin, you say, okay, that's the one I'm gonna pollinate. Go and get you some tissue test done. What you'll do is you'll cut the, uh, the you know, the, the stock where the leaves are growing and get you about four of them. You want the middle part of that. You don't want the leaf. You don't want the bottom end. You want the middle section. Get the middle section. Get you about four of them. And take those four, turn them in, and uh, and uh, you know get them tested. And see what see what your nutrients are doing. See what your fertilizers are doing. See if the fertilizers are truly doing what they say they're doing. You know, or, or what you think they're supposed to be doing. Right? Sometimes they're not. Sometimes they aren't doing it. And if they're not, you need to get a hold of the company and tell them, hey, you said this, test prove you're wrong. You are not the father, kind of Mur Maury kind of thing, right? Uh, just call them up and say, hey, the test showed, showed that that was a lie. All right, um, get that figured out and stuff with the companies. Um, if they are doing good, great keep following through with what you're doing maybe even start adding to right because there is that there is that that line that border that kind of line that grow giant growers play with we bump right up against the line of extreme too much right this is like this is extreme this is too much this is extreme and we're holding it there and, we, and it just you know don't take maybe another spray of that stuff to be too much right so we, we, we bump that borderline of extreme and too much constantly. We, we walk that fine line the entire year, pushing these things to, to the absolute extreme without killing them. So um, that is what you want to do, and you want to hold it there. Now, you know, come a few weeks later after you've got that pumpkin growing and it's looking good, and you know, it's 100, 200, 300 pounds, whatever you feel comfortable with, um, I would take another soil, you know, or excuse me, another uh, tissue test and, uh, and, and, you know, just make sure that you're dialed in. You know, make sure that what you, what you are doing is really working, that you're not lacking in something crazy like molybdenum or, or, you know, a copper or something of that or a calcium or something, right? You know, you think you got enough, but you're, you're lacking, you know, a hundred parts per million or something, right? Which, I mean... Who's going to really notice it much when you got a you know a pumpkin growing 50, 60 pounds a day? But it, but if you got that hundred parts per million up, it could be growing 70, 80 pounds per day, right? I mean that's how it could be hitting the two thousand mark. So you, you just got to dial them in. You got to take your tissue samples and, and, and get them in and, and and everything and make sure you got that part. So that's 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 the rest of what I was going to talk about with the soil tests. You need tissue tests now. When it comes time for tissue testing. I'll do a video on tissue testing and we'll go more in depth about tissue testings and the why you tissue test and what you should be looking for during the tissue test and all of that. I just wanted to kind of wrap this video up with the next step, all right, with soil tests. So you got your soil test, you have men, you can do another soil test if you want to, if you prefer to, and then to wrap it all up and bring it together, you have the growth of the plant and the fruit, and then you start doing tissue tests, all right? And that's gonna be the next stage to this, um, which is months down the road, but it's coming up and approaching very fast. So, with that being said, let's just kind of look at everything. Um, tomorrow, we're going to be uh, pollinating that right there. You can see it. Tomorrow, that'll be pollinated. I'm very excited, finally getting a uh, giant cucumber that's going to open up, female that's going to open up so we can pollinate it. Sadly, it's on the smaller plant. As you can see there, it's in the two gallon pot. But nonetheless, that's all right. We're, we're, that'll be okay. Man, we're not going to, we're not going to cry about it. The plant's very small though. You can tell there. It's, it's just very small. It's not really growing anymore. This one here is, 
is, is very big. It's got, you know, side vines growing everywhere on it. It's got, uh, you know, it's got a cucumber there. It's got a cucumber there. Um, where else here? It's got a cucumber there. Right there. It's got another one right here, which that one right there is going to open probably on Tuesday. I would say that's going to open Tuesday. So it's got that one there, and it's probably got another one or two hiding out on me that I ain't. Yeah, right there. Right there's one. But, uh, it's going to be opening probably tomorrow or Tuesday as well. So it's got plenty of cucumbers on it. Plenty of plenty of uh, of uh, flat male flowers as well, but. Uh, they're starting to drop down in production, the male flowers are, so they need, these uh, females need to hurry up and open up so I can pollinate. But anyhow, um, I'm gonna be pollinating those tomorrow, that one right there specifically, because it's it should open up tomorrow. Um, the beans are looking great, but I mean, good night living, look at that thing. Isn't that crazy? Uh, that one, and then, uh, the, where's the other one at? Where the, oh, right here, it gets me in the hand every time. I never see it because it's right there. It looks like a leaf. Uh, got all these right here. Let's check all them out, right? Tons of little ones, right? Let's look at these up here I found today. <laughs> oh, mercy. Mercy, mercy, mercy. This plant's going nuts. There's four of them up there in case you can't tell. Um, and there's tons of them everywhere else I'm growing on this thing. That plant goes all the way up there. It's crazy. But uh, anyhow, um, the bottom part of it is, you know, slowly dying off, giving way to the top part. Um, so don't really know why. I think it's because it's turning more like a stick um, down there, like kind of like the snail vines are. It's like solid enough, you know. This one here is the world record one. All right, so we still got to be really, no, we can't have you coming over here. Sorry. You got to grow over here. Oh, there's another baby one right there. Um, but, oh, come on. Um, like I was saying, we got, uh, we got the, the giant bean right here. Um, we might have to do something about that pretty soon, probably tomorrow. Uh, it's just, it don't want to grow very, very fast or something. I don't know what's wrong with it. Um, it's very, very slow growing and, you know, the seed was crushed. So the plant might not produce like it should, or it might just be taking a very, very long time because maybe it just didn't have what it needed to, to produce like it should, right? To produce the, the, the plant that it should. So I don't know, again, like I said, it was crushed and you guys have seen that I grew it from a crushed seed. So um, it's one of them things. Some flowers starting to open up there a little bit, you know, but she's, she's quite the length. So we're, we're just gonna keep on growing her and stuff. Uh, I think uh, the head ain't nowhere near done, I don't believe. So, uh, cause this, I mean, good grief, that was off of a, you know, a, a 21 and an eighth inch sunflower. So uh, that, that head should be a lot bigger than that. Um, we have Glaze, Peter Glazebrook eggplant here. It's growing, it looks very well since, uh, since it came up yesterday. This is the Chris Brown one. And, uh, and somehow, for some reason, it burnt off its, um, its uh, cotyledons. And I don't like that, but it is what it is. Ain't much I can do about it. Uh, those are all the potted up plants there. Potted up roots, or beet roots there. Uh, turnips and giant sweets right here. Those are my tomato plants that came up off of the one seed from the uh, 7.58 Howl Joel Leave It. Um, carrots are over here, my giant carrots. They're looking pretty good. I can't wait to get these guys in some good ground and get them growing and I'm excited for that. I'm just letting them get root bound in that right there. Um, and then we'll cut them out and put one in that tote over there that we were talking about. Um, don't think I've got anything to come up in here today. I don't believe, nope, nothing. So uh, we'll spray it down with water and, and get it uh, get it ready to go um trying to get them giant leaks to grow i don't know if they're going to or not they was pretty smashed but uh everything else is looking good got peppers everywhere on these things on this plant right here especially look how big that plant is guys that thing is huge 
um, just peppers taking over everywhere. So, uh, anyhow, guys, uh, we appreciate you watching. We'll see you tomorrow right here in the Hollers and Hills of West Virginia. Don't forget to smash that like button. Hit that notification bell. Don't forget to share. Thank you, good sir. You're welcome. And subscribe.